journey. We're uh, here and we're going through our third week of Pray First and we're just super excited to uh, talk about this next section of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the first week we talked and we discussed um, just really uh, the, the purpose behind why we were doing this. We believe that right now it is so crucial for us to understand uh, prayer and to live a lifestyle of prayer and to implement these things. And uh, last week we talked about uh, in the Lord's Prayer uh, that Jesus told us to pray our Father in heaven and how crucial it is that we recognize that when we pray, we are not praying as uh, slaves, but we are praying as sons and daughters of God. And uh, we were just talking right before we started, and uh, maybe Bishop, you can just share a little bit. Uh, this is Bishop, you've become the church, and we actually had the opportunity uh, to go on a mission trip not long ago to Guyana, and um, we were praying together uh, in a hotel room, and right on the other side of the room was a Hindu temple, and we could hear them chanting and praying to their dead God, and we were praying together to the living God, and just really seeking Him, and uh, so Bishop uh, just really has a uh, heart for worship and a heart for prayer. And uh, so just maybe share a little bit about the Lord's Prayer and what we were discussing before uh, we turn the camera on. I really want to commend you for doing this study for the people because um, the Lord says, as the people saw him, the disciples saw him praying, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. His answer was, after this manner, pray ye. In other words, he didn't say pray these words. Right. He says pray this pattern. The Lord's Prayer is a pattern for us to come before God. Yeah. And he laid it out. And if you were to pray that way, you can really pray for an hour with no effort. <laughs> if you right. follow the pattern. Right. And um, I have been praying that way for years now. Yeah. And I come before God. The first thing I ask to be cleansed. For the Bible says having boldness. To enter in the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil which is to say his flesh. So I, I never come before God and just barge into his presence without first being cleansed by the blood. Right. And then secondly, he says, he says, all Father which art in heaven like you dealt with last week, right. hallowed be thy name. Right. So I enter his presence with praise and thanksgiving, and it's, it's just wonderful. Yeah, so we're, I cannot praying, yes. we're praying our Father in heaven, yes. recognizing that we are sons and daughters of God, yes. and he instructs us to pray like this, yes. not pray this, but yes. exact words, but pray like this, yes. hallowed be your name. In other words, worship be unto God, yes. uh, that we're offering our worship, that we're coming before him and saying, God, you were so good, yes. Lord, you were just so wonderful, yes. uh, how incredible you are, and... Yes. Uh, one way of remembering this is by going through the names yes, of the, names the Lord. Of you know, the, the good thing about it is that in Hebrew, they would say, Shema Israel Adonai Elohenu Adonai Echad, which is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mm. We don't need many gods. We have one. His yes. name is Jehovah. Jehovah means I am what you need me to be, when you need me to be it. I love that. That's so, good. Right. <laughs> so why do I need many? But right. like you said earlier, Pastor Adam, you cannot recognize God as Father without worshiping Him. Yeah. The moment I recognize Him as my Father, right. and He loved me, right. the other thing for me to that do. The creator of the universe, yes. who's done, created it all, is our Father. Yes. When you really understand that, yes. you can't help but to worship, worship God. Him. You can't yeah. help. For he said, Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that you visit him? Right. You made him a little lower than the angels, but yet you crown him with glory and honor. That's yeah. the word of the Lord. So when I recognize him as my father, I recognize first him as Jehovah Sitkanu, our righteousness. Yeah. So I don't come to him based on any righteousness of mine. I come based on the righteousness of Jesus, be greeted to me by his son who he gave for me. I love that. And, <laughs> and the righteousness, what it says in the book here, we were on page seven. There's a link on the screen right now to download the digital file. But God is righteousness. He makes us clean. He makes us clean. Yeah. And the other name for thing is Jehovah Sitkanu, but Jehovah Mikadish. The word Mikadish means to sanctify, yep. to set apart. 
He has called us and set us apart. Set us apart. Yeah. He took me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Remember what Paul yeah. says? He says, he appeared to you to deliver you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send you. To turn them from darkness to light. From the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. That's in me. So in other words, when I recognize him as my Jehovah Sifton, Mm. My, right, he is the one who cleansed me. Yeah. But such were some of you. Sorry for quoting scripture. No, no, no. I love it. We all fall. We all need sanctification. Yes. We've all fallen short. We're all sinners, and so yes. we recognize the the name of God here. He's our sanctifier. Yes, but it's not a one-time thing. Right. It is a daily cleansing. Just like the high priest had mm. to be cleansed before he entered the holy of holies, the priests had to wash their hands, their feet. They fix before they enter into the tabernacle. Every day we can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Then, he's, then he is my Jehovah Shama, the one who will never leave me nor forsake me. So Jehovah, is that the shepherd? God is our shepherd? Yeah, no, Jehovah, yes, Jehovah my shepherd. But then he's Jehovah, he is Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah Mikedesh, Jehovah Shalom. Which is a little different from the, the pattern you have there. But he's my peace. Yeah. Then he is Jehovah Shammah, the one who will never leave me nor forsake me. That's good to know. Especially right now, this time, just knowing that God's never going to leave you nor forsake you yes. in the midst of when everybody's feeling like there's a storm, yes. there's a struggle, yes. there's just all this stuff coming at us. To know that he's with us and by our side yes. uh, is such an incredible there thing. That we're, yes. Yeah. There will never be a time when he will leave me. The f I learned this scripture, mm -hmm. hearing a drunk man walking in the street, quoting it. And that is, and Jesus said, him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so really, truly, during this time of pandemic and uncertainty and stress, and it's a good time for people to pray yeah. and set themselves apart. That when you come out of this, you're supposed to be ten times stronger than before you went into this situation. Yeah. Because that's God's intention. His intention is that this wouldn't destroy us. Right. It would purify us and force right. us to come to Him. Right. The Bible says if we draw nigh to Him, He will draw nigh to us. Yeah. You know, and uh, so then He is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Yeah. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yeah. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Yeah. Jehovah Nissi, my banner. Yeah. You know, so when I look at all... It's an old song, Jehovah Nissi, reign victory. You heard that song? No, no, no. Jehovah Nissi. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's an old song from the 80s. Yeah. Remember my grandma going around and yeah. <laughs> singing the song. <laughs> but Jehovah Nissi is, is the, my banner. Yeah. He brought me into his banqueting house and his banner over me is love. Psalms of Solomon. Yeah. So really and truly it's uh, when I come into his presence before I ask for anything, right. I want to just worship him and praise him. Sometimes yeah. you, you may not even feel like asking for anything. You may just get stuck in that place of just wanting to worship him. Right. You know, and then at other times he may lead you to then go on right. and declare his kingdom and so on. But what we're talking about tonight or at this time is to recognize him as my Jehovah. Yeah. He, he is whatever I need him to be. Yeah, that's good to know. Whenever yeah. I need him to be it. Yeah. So he don't have my healing. He is my yeah, healing. healing. Yeah. He don't have my life. Yeah. He is my life. And yeah. that's the difference with our God. So when Jesus say, come and say, uh, say to him, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed. Or the King James Version said, How did Satan and other words? Praise be unto your name. Right. And the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yeah, Proverbs. Uh, 1810 in the book it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous man runs into it and is safe the name of the Lord yeah so we can look at these names and who God is and declare that and worship him through that and then as we're doing that we're, we're, we're running to the Lord as we're, as we're doing that and then in those moments I mean the only time I've really felt um, I feel more peace in my life 
when I have I'm worshiping the Lord, when I yes, have yes. worship music playing, when I'm because uh, right now with all the noise and stuff like that, it's so easy to get my mind yes. off yes. of what God is really doing, and uh, anxiety can come in, all these other things. But if we stay in an attitude uh, of worship all the time, it doesn't have any room for anything. No, no room for that. Yeah. No room. You know, you remember when the prophet had told the woman, go and borrow vessels. Mm -hmm. He said, borrow empty vessels. See, the problem is that people are too filled with everything else. Yeah. So there is no room for God. So we have to, that's what prayer does. It empty me of all the distractions, yeah. everything else, so that he can fill me up. That's what even fasting is about. Right. It is to be emptied from, it is especially now, today, in this season, where there are noise of, from every direction. Right. You need to set yourself apart. And that's worship music is so good to put it on. Right. And then before you pray, just let it play for a while. Read the word and then find a place. Yep. It's very important for people to have a place in their home. Not for watching TV, not for talking, but this place yeah. is their altar, as it were. Yep. We really. talked about that the first week. You need a place. Yes. And you need time. You need a place and a time. Yeah, and just kind of regularly, whatever time is yes. best for you, yes, yes. give God your best, whatever time it is. Whatever it? time, yes. yes. And yes. after a while, he's like, he's going to be sitting there waiting for you to go. Yes. That's amazing. Right. You know, I the place I pray is about two steps from my bed. Okay. You'd be surprised how many times I get up. The moment I put my foot on the ground to go and pray, most times I pray like three in the morning because I, yeah, I wake up every night for that purpose. Yeah. But the moment I get up, I will hear what I have to pray for. A lot of times, pray about this. Yeah. You know, ask about that or seek about this. Mm. A few weeks ago, he, you know, instructions about different things to pray for. Yeah. But what you're dealing with, Pastor Adam, I want to applaud you for that, to take the time and to teach the people of God the importance and prayer is a delight. Yeah. It first starts as a, de a desire. Right. Jesus says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, if you have a desire, mm -hmm. it will make you pray. Yeah. Right? So it starts with a desire. Then you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And this decision, I'm going to pray. I remember the first time I started praying, prayed for like 10 minutes and thought I'd pray for a long time yeah. until I begin to discipline myself. And then after a while, it became a delight. Mm -hmm. It was like the most wonderful thing I can do because I can go and spend time with God, not necessarily asking, sure. just fellowshipping with Him. Yeah. You know? right. And I really want to thank you for taking the time. Yeah, it's a privilege of ours to be able to do that. We really felt like uh, when we were talking through some things that it was almost out of conviction that we really wanted to, to teach on this because how important it is to be spiritually prepared yes. and uh, what we're talking about now with with worship is uh, we have this quote in our worship team that we say pretty often you might have heard me say it on Sunday morning but uh, worship creates an atmosphere where faith can be fueled yes. and faith creates an atmosphere of expectancy where miracles can happen Absolutely. and so starting off praying with worship sets the tone yes. for your faith as you're praying um, whatever remainder of time that you have that you set aside for to really seek the Lord. But you know, worship I, worship is to is to tell God about God. Yeah. yeah I can't it's tell not you. songs we sing. No, no. No, no we can confuse with that. Yeah. yeah. It's um it's uh God will have a big ego and need me to tell him nice things. My right. worship don't add anything to him. Right. But it certainly bring me into a relationship with him. Yeah. You know, in Hebrew, there are seven words for worship, yep. which is Toda, and Yara, and Halal, and Zemar, and Tehillah, and Barach, and yep. Shabbat. Yep. But it's it's like different moods that God is in. Mm -hmm. At times, He wants us to get hilarious and excited, and then right. He wants us to be calm and quiet and tranquil. But the whole thing is, this worship bring me into this relationship, yeah. where He, he wants to show me right. that I am who you say I am, and I will prove that to you, you know? Yeah, amen. And um, I, uh, I think that when the Lord says, after this manner, the moment people begin to follow the steps that you are sharing, it will become such a delight that they can't wait to... It's life-changing, really. It's really life-changing. Yeah. See, you can teach people uh, about Jesus, 
you can teach them Jesus. Right. They have to know him for themselves. Yeah. And they experience him. Yes, I yeah. can pray for somebody, but it is not like when they, I pray for them, for them to learn to pray for themselves. Right. Because when they meet God for yourself, there's nothing. Some things aren't taught, some things are taught. God, yes. Yeah. They're God, and they are, but it's wonderful. You know, when I got saved, I got saved at 13. Right. At 15, I went, old Indian man was boasting that he fasted for three days to do yoga. Mm -hmm. While I was walking home, the Lord came to me. I can take you to the spot in the road. And said, look at that. An old man like that can fast to serve the devil. And a young man like you cannot fast to serve me. <laughs> it was not nice. Yeah. I ran home for, and fasted for five days. Wow. But during that time, everything that I have done, and everything that I will do right. for the rest of my life, I saw at 15 during that time. Wow. Not anybody preaching to me, not anybody laying hands on me, mm -hmm. not anybody prophesying to me, but me going to the church, kneeling between those views, yeah. and praying yeah. for myself. You start with prayer for the fasting. Pray. Yeah. So maybe even God's challenging now that this might be a moment in time where you need to fast yes. and really set aside for the Lord. and. Uh, I, I just believe that fasting should be a lifestyle as well. Yes, yes. Like, hey, even even plan it out. Maybe every Monday you give mm -hmm. up a meal, or you give up the whole day where you yes, don't eat, yes, or yes. you just take that day and you really seek the Lord, or take that one meal a week and you really seek God and uh, really start living a lifestyle of prayer. Maybe He's challenging you to do three days. Maybe He's challenging you yes. to do five days yes, yes. or more. It could be. It's really up to you and what God's challenging you to do. But uh, just know that. Um, Prayer and fasting, it works. It works. Yeah. It works. There's no, no power that you can defeat. Yeah. There's no victory that you cannot experience. There's no glory that you can come into. Right. If you were to take, no matter what age you are, no matter what mistakes you made in the past, yeah. no matter how many times you fell, once you make up your mind that I will seek the Lord. Yeah. He says, you shall seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart. Yeah. He didn't say, say, seek me and maybe you'll find me. No. Right. He says, you shall seek me and find me. Yeah. He says, seek and ye shall find. That's what I love about Amen. it. Love it's that. the greatest guarantee. It's, so good. it's like, why don't people do it? Right. This is the greatest guarantee. You right. don't have to impress him. Right. You don't have to come in no special clothes. You don't have to do nothing. All you do is come yeah. and talk. You don't have to pray like me or pray like Pastor Adam or nobody yeah. else. Pray your way. Yeah. Talk to God from your heart. Right. Don't get caught up with what you're saying. Just, <laughs> just let it go. Whatever's in your heart, just let it be. <laughs> you must hear, that's what I love about the Psalms. It's just David pouring out his heart. Yes. It's yes. just so raw and real. Uh, yes. But would you mind, would you pray for us? And then uh, we'll close the time out. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this time together. Amen. We truly want to know you. For you said in the word that they who do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. We pray your blessing on your people as they yes, have looked Lord. today at this session. We pray for favor that as they seek you, they will find you yes, from Lord the Jesus. moment they begin. Let there be such an excitement drawing them closer to your heart. And I know that you will bless us. So I say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yes, and the Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you peace now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if you want a physical copy, you can pick one of these up at the church. Pray first book. Also, uh, you don't want to miss next week. Uh, we have uh, an incredible uh, dynamic duo, Pastor and Mary Jo are going to be sharing. I know many people will be excited about that. Yeah. Whatever Mary Jo uh, does anything, speaks or comes online, whatever it might be, it's always the most viewed thing yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. People love her. Yeah. So uh, we all do. So, hey, uh, we love you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in and watching. We just pray that uh, you'll grow uh, through these teachings that we put out. Uh, you can also go back and view the previous twos if you, if you need to catch up. And uh, it's just a tremendous time. Thank you so much for, for joining us this week. Praise God. Appreciate Thank you very it. Much. All right. Love you guys.